Introduction A lot of marketers have all sorts of wrong ideas about social media marketing. Some think that you only need to post viral content to get tons of traffic overnight. They actually believe that if you are able to pump that much traffic to your target website, a large chunk of those people will buy whatever it is that you are selling. Maybe you're selling services, maybe you're selling an event, or maybe you're selling products from an online store. It doesn't matter. According to this idea, you just need to have a lot of traffic, courtesy of viral content on social media, and you will get the conversions you're looking for. There is an assumption that social traffic, regardless of which platform it comes from and regardless of how you qualify that traffic, converts to sales readily. Sadly, none of these assumptions are true. In fact, all of them are tragically mistaken. If you believe in any of these, don't be surprised if you spend a lot of time, effort, and money, only to end up with a whole lot of nothing. Welcome to the club. Effective social media marketing can be reduced to one metaphor. Master this metaphor and you probably will make money on autopilot with social media traffic. Screw up this metaphor or remain clueless to it and you'll continue to struggle. You'll continue to believe that social media traffic can easily be generated through viral content. You might keep running after that unicorn only to get tired and frustrated. It doesn't have to be this way. You just have to have the right metaphor or the right conceptual model to make social media marketing work for you. Best of all, you can make it work on autopilot. You probably have heard all sorts of set it and forget it systems. You probably bought at least one of these products. Well, they're definitely on the right track as far as their label. Social media marketing can be automated. It can be mastered to the point where it can produce income after you've set it. But getting there is another matter entirely. And that's the price people have to pay. And unfortunately, most people are not willing to pay that. They're excited about shortcuts, but they're not willing to take the stairs to get to the top. At the back of their minds, they're thinking that there has to be some sort of elevator. There is no shortcut. You have to work with this metaphor. And what am I getting at? Well, the secret to effective social media marketing is an inverted pyramid. It looks like a funnel. That is the metaphor you should have in your mind when thinking of ways to get traffic from social networks and social media platforms and turning that into cold, hard cash in your bank account. I need you to keep this idea of an inverted pyramid in your mind. It should have a wide base at the top. The top of that pyramid is heavy visibility. It has to be there. You need to be visible on the four major social media platforms. I'm talking about Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. Taken together, the traffic volume you can get from these four platforms is mind-blowing. They can potentially pump a tremendous amount of traffic, but that's just part of the equation. That's just the top of the funnel. Potentially, you can push a lot of traffic from the top. That's how wide the top of the funnel is. This training will focus on these four platforms, but you can pretty much use the tips that I'm going to share with you and modify them to market on other platforms since many of these principles easily apply. You might need to modify them a little bit, for example, if you were thinking of marketing on Instagram, a lot of the things that I will teach you about Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest can be tweaked to work well on the Instagram platform. Now that you have a clear idea of the heavy visibility that you can achieve with social media, keep in mind that visibility does not mean traffic or clicks to your site. This is a myth. The visibility that I'm talking about means visibility on those platforms. When people share your content within those platforms, you can enjoy a tremendous reach within such platforms. But this does not automatically mean that when you share content on Facebook, people who see your link and the materials shared by their friends would automatically click them. Get the idea out of your head that raw visibility, or as Facebook terms it, reach, automatically translates to traffic. It doesn't work that way. Instead, you need to start with heavy content visibility on each platform. People must see your stuff there. You must achieve a wide enough reach. People may not necessarily click on through to your site, but that's secondary. At this point, you just want your brand to be visible. You just want people to become familiar with your brand. So what's the big deal about visibility anyway? You may be thinking, since visibility doesn't mean actual visitors to your website, what good is it? Think about it this way. When was the last time you saw an ad for the first time and automatically clicked it? If you're like most other people, you probably would want to see the ad show up a few times for you to become familiar with it. You might glance at it from time to time. You might read the description from time to time. But after enough showings, you might seriously think of clicking through. The same applies to your content on social media platforms. 
Don't expect that just because you come up with catchy titles and nice attention-grabbing graphics that this is enough for you to expect a tremendous amount of clicks to your website. It doesn't work that way. People have to be comfortable enough. Your content has to become familiar enough for them to click on it. When audience members click on the content you share through your social media accounts, they get a chance to like your page, follow your Twitter feed, pin your posts, or subscribe to your YouTube channel. They still stay on the platform, but they get a chance to subscribe to your account or follow you. This is the second stage of the social media funnel or inverted pyramid. You have to develop some sort of in-platform credibility. Your content is not just this random material that came out of nowhere. Even if people don't click on it, they see enough similarity in terms of branding, graphics, as well as other content cues so that your brand stands apart from everyone else's. Again, they may not necessarily be motivated to click, but with enough repetition through social media channels targeting certain topic categories and hashtags, your brand doesn't remain an unknown quantity. Once you have people checking your content out through your social media accounts, you can then send them call-to-action content, CTA. This content recruits people to your mailing list. This social content that you're sharing offers some sort of incentive. Maybe you're giving away a free booklet. Maybe you're giving away software. Whatever the case may be, there is some sort of giveaway to incentivize people to click on that link, enter their email address, and join your mailing list. Whether you use freebies, special content, special free tickets to an online webinar that's pre-recorded, it doesn't really matter. Whatever the case may be, the end game is to get people to join your list. The end game? Well, when you look at the funnel, the end game is to get people to that narrow end of the funnel. At that end, you're not necessarily getting them to click on an ad to buy something. You're doing something far more valuable. Instead, you're calling them to action so they join your list. You are converting your social media reach, meaning the top end of the funnel, to list membership which is at the very narrow point at the bottom of the inverted pyramid. This is where the magic happens. Once people join your list because you have successfully incentivized them to enter their email on your squeeze page, you get a tremendous opportunity to build a long-term sales relationship. That's really the best way to describe it because when people give you their email addresses, what they're really telling you is that they trust you enough to want to have a business relationship with you. This means you should not abuse that relationship. You should not send them garbage. You should not send them spam. And by spam, I'm talking about material that is not related to the topic of your list. Stay on message. Because if you're able to do this, you would have a tremendous opportunity to shape the conversation and continue to sell and convert your list, not just once, not just twice, but over the long haul. There are many successful list marketers who make seven figures every single year, and all they have is a mailing list. It all depends on how you build that list, who's on that list, and what you are selling on that list. Regardless of how you cut it, you can turn what would otherwise be a huge amount of social media reach into a loyal list. This is the secret to effective social media marketing. You probably haven't heard this before. I wouldn't be surprised because the vast majority of social media marketing books out there try to trick you into thinking that you just need to harvest all this traffic from social media so people can click like monkeys on the ads on your website. Maybe that worked when Facebook first launched nationally. It definitely doesn't work today. Sadly, this is where too many marketers fail. They screw this up. Now that you know the secret, here's some bad news. This is precisely the point where too many marketers screw up. When they're sending social media content, they promote their squeeze page directly. Although the squeeze page gives away freebies and incentivizes people to sign up, this is too much too soon. And, not surprisingly, a lot of these marketers burn through a lot of exposure just to get people to their list. Worse yet, when these people join their mailing list, they're completely unprepared. They don't know what to expect. They're not properly conditioned. A lot of them are not even fully qualified to become list members. So what do they do? They end up doing a whole lot of nothing. This is actually the worst kind of list member. It's much better to just have a very tiny list because if you have a huge list and almost everybody doesn't do anything to put money in your pockets, you're going to be paying for those list squatters month after month. Alternatively, you might attract list bouncers. These are people who join your list just to get whatever premium you're offering, download it, and then promptly unsubscribe. They have effectively bounced from your list. Effective social media marketing. Effective social media marketing means using your social media traffic and highly effective content shared on social media to build successful relationships. 
Your email list is going to be the platform you will use to convert the relationships made possible through all that social media traffic. You're essentially creating highly targeted mailing lists using content shared on targeted channels on social media. This is the secret to effective modern social media marketing. What social media marketing is and what it isn't. There's a lot of misconceptions regarding what social media marketing actually is. In fact, when you come across people who call themselves social media marketing consultants or practitioners, chances are very high that they will give you different definitions. Part of this is due to the fact that there are many different points of emphasis when it comes to social media marketing. Some people focus on the content. Others pay more attention to the network that the content is going to be addressed to. Others give more of their focus to social engagement. Naturally, to the layperson, social media marketing is a big question mark. I understand if you're confused at this point. In fact, you may be so confused that you try to simplify things in your head and end up focusing on how to get as much traffic for as little effort as possible. That is precisely how a lot of online entrepreneurs and marketers approach social media marketing. Sadly, that is a one-way ticket to failure or disappointment. It's not just going to work out sooner or later. With any kind of project, you have to have the right definition. Otherwise, you're making things harder on yourself. Depending on the definition you go with, you might have all sorts of expectations. And if these outcomes do not come to pass, your resolve and your motivation levels start to suffer. You have to work with the right definition. A winning definition. With all of the above said, what is social media marketing for our present purposes? Well, since this training uses list marketing as its main vehicle for converting social media reach into cold, hard cash, social media marketing is all about content-based audience relationship building. Let me repeat that. Social media marketing is all about content-based audience relationship building. You need to use content in a strategic way. You need to speak to certain audiences and build a relationship with them. This relationship is not this broad word that makes people feel good, but ultimately doesn't mean much of anything. Instead, this relationship has a tangible form. And I am, of course, talking about your mailing list. Once you get people on your mailing list, that's when the fun begins. Everything else is just a workup or a preliminary prior to that point. You need to get people on your list. Social media marketing is going to be your primary vehicle to get people to your list. Everything has to revolve around that list, and this must shape, inform, and guide your social media actions. Managing Your Expectations A content-based audience relationship approach to social media marketing sets different expectations compared to other ways of defining this type of marketing. When you read the typical social media marketing book, for example, How to Dominate Twitter, the focus is on traffic. Unfortunately, if that is your main goal, you end up with a the more the better mindset and you feel really depressed at the end of the day because the traffic doesn't come. Even if it does, there's not going to be enough of it. You have set yourself up to fail. When you use a content-based audience relationship building approach to social media marketing, your focus is on getting the right content in front of the right eyeballs to build the right levels of trust. This is a long-term game. It is definitely a marathon, not a sprint. Since that is your expectation coming in, you position yourself for a long-term victory. You're not going to be the typical failed social media marketer who jumps into the game with both feet, only to find out that the traffic simply isn't there. So what do they do? That's right, they quit. Manage your expectations by focusing on the right definition and you will be okay. The worst thing you can do right now is to sabotage any chance of future success by defining the problem the wrong way and filling your mind with all the wrong expectations. Social media marketing can build brands if. Now that we've defined social media marketing, the next step is to focus on the end result of this content-based audience relationship building approach. If you do everything right, you walk away with a brand. And let me tell you, that is the best asset you will ever have. Now, in terms of real-world traffic, you may get a low to moderate level of traffic. But if you build a solid brand, that traffic is all you need. That is qualified traffic. These are not random people just blindly clicking on links out of curiosity. These are people who are actually interested in whatever it is you are trying to sell. They want to truly learn more. They want to build a relationship with you because they want to know what you're about, like what you have to offer, and eventually trust whatever it is you are pushing. These are real people. 
And this is only possible if you build a solid brand. You have to deliver solid value. I wish I could tell you that content marketing is enough to do it. I really wish I could say that, but that is not true. That only explains part of the situation. Sure, you have to deliver content that people truly are interested in, but at the end of the day, when they join your list, they are expecting and deserve value. That's how you build a solid brand. When people join your list, they will quickly find out that they did not waste their time because you send high quality updates that actually add value to their lives. Social media marketing can explode the rate at which brands are formed. That's why a lot of people are ranting and raving about social media marketing, but a lot of them are clueless as to how to build a solid brand. Most of the time, they just stumbled into it. I'll let you in on the secret. It's all about content-based audience relationship building. There are many different parts to that equation, and I'm going to walk you through them in a practical way in the following videos. In this section, I just want you to wrap your mind around the definition and the expectations that flow from it. This is how we tightly define the project that you're going to embark on. Anything less, chances are, you're going to beat yourself up unnecessarily because you just had unrealistic expectations. This is not one of those get-rich-quick schemes. This is not one of those overnight success stories. This requires real work. This is the real deal. Are you ready for the journey? Great. Let's get on to video two. Eight reasons why you need to do social media marketing. Just to be sure, if you are in any way, shape, or form unclear as to the value of social media marketing, here are just eight reasons why it needs to be part of your comprehensive online marketing plan. Maybe your current plan puts more emphasis on search engine marketing. Maybe you're currently focused on outreach. Well, those are all well and good. But to really round things out and add a lot more value to your current online marketing campaign, social media marketing has to be part of the equation. It doesn't have to take center stage. It doesn't have to be your overarching priority. But it has to be a part of the total mix. Here are just eight of the thousands of reasons why your company, regardless of its size, needs to do social media marketing. Reason number one, social media's huge direct and viral reach. If you build a solid page on Facebook, you develop a direct reach. This means that a certain percentage of people who like your page will see your updates. While it is true that Facebook has been reducing the organic reach of Facebook pages recently, there's a workaround to that. When people go to your page, you can instruct them to like your page and then click your page's settings to show your updates first. You might want to show a video that teaches people how to do this. You might even post an animated GIF. Whatever you do, clue people in that they can fix their settings to see your updates first. Now, for people that take the time and bother to do this, you have to offer content that is really valuable. This puts the onus on you. There has to be real value on your page for them to want to do this but you can increase your direct reach by instructing people. On top of that, when people like your content, they can share it on their wall. Since people on Facebook have friends and their friends have friends, this can easily have an exponential effect. In fact, even if your page only has 100 likes, but these are real people with real friends, don't be surprised if one of your posts gets really viral and spreads all over the place. Social media enables you to have a large direct reach. It also provides you with a tremendous opportunity to enjoy an exponential content coverage. Reason number two, social media is habitual. While different demographics have shown softening or weakening of social media usage on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, this still doesn't take away from the fact that a lot of people habitually use social media. In fact, a lot of people do this the first thing in the morning. When they wake up, they go to their mobile phone or tablet and check their updates it can easily become a habit. This gives you a tremendous opportunity to get your content and brand in front of many interested eyeballs. Reason number three, target audiences use different content formats. The great thing about social media marketing is that you're not restricted to just one content format. You're not restricted to video, pictures, links, blog posts, text, or audio files. Instead, different platforms specialize in different formats. And when you create content for one platform, you can easily make different versions of it in different formats to spread out to other platforms. For example, I write a blog post and post it on Facebook. I create a very attention-grabbing graphic for that blog post. So when I post it on my Facebook page, 
a preview of the image shows up and it grabs a lot of attention. People click on it and they end up on my website. I can take that graphic and share it on Pinterest. I can take the text of my blog post or article and create a slideshow video out of it and share it on YouTube. I can also take that video and embed it in my blog post. I can strip different parts of the article or post itself and feed it into Twitter along with the link to the full post or article. Do you see how this works? You get access to the different audiences or those different platforms by simply repurposing or recycling the same content that you made for one platform and sharing those other formats on other platforms. This increases your potential reach. Reason number four, most social media platforms can be segmented. If you've ever been to Instagram, you know that when you see a picture, it usually has many different tags. If you've been on Twitter, you'd see that a lot of the hot tweets also have hashtags. Those tags are very valuable. When you use a tag with your content, you are essentially categorizing your content. People use those tags to search for content. This is a very powerful segmentation tool. People who are looking for cute chihuahua puppies will use certain hashtags that are different from people looking for libertarian political posts. If you have a very tightly defined audience, social media platforms built in segmentation tools and features can definitely help you. You probably already know that huge audiences that are not very targeted are essentially worthless. Thanks to social media marketing segmentation features, you can get a smaller volume of people from many different platforms, but you can rest assured that these people are actually interested in whatever it is you are saying. These segmentation tools go a long way in helping you to find a very refined and well-qualified audience base. This, in turn, increases your likelihood of making a sale. Reason number five, sharing content on most platforms can be automated. Thanks to tools like Hootsuite and Social Oomph, you don't have to worry about manually going to Facebook or Twitter and copying and pasting materials from a document or spending hours setting up your scheduled posts. You can automate your posts to publish up to six months on Facebook. This means that you can set up your Facebook account to post six to ten or more times every day, but you don't have to babysit it because you have fed the content in. The best part is that a lot of these automation tools use bulk feeds, meaning you can format your content in an Excel file and convert it to CSV and plug into these tools. You don't have to input the materials one by one. Talk about saving a lot of time while also maximizing your reach. Reason number six, you can run a two-track marketing campaign using mailing lists. The heart of a content-based audience relationship marketing campaign on social media is to build a highly targeted mailing list. Now, this is not what you think. A lot of people are thinking that once they build the list, they're on their way to becoming a millionaire. Absolutely wrong. They're missing a step. When people join your mailing list, it really is a general mailing list. By general, I'm not saying that it talks about all subjects under the sun. I'm not talking about that. Instead, I'm talking about general interest in the specific topic. You really don't know yet at this point who is a buyer and who is a person who is simply looking for information and is still trying to make up their minds whether they trust you enough. You create a general list and then eventually you try to upsell them to a buyer's list. And how do you do that? Well, you sell low-cost items on your general list. You can sell a booklet for $1. It doesn't really matter what the price is. It has to be very low because what you're really trying to do here is that you're trying to give people a means to identify themselves as a buyer and you want to make it as smooth and easy as possible. A dollar is almost an afterthought to most people. They won't think that it's too painful to buy your product. But once they get to your buyer's list, you eliminate them from your general list and now you have a pure list of buyers. That list, my friend, is a gold mine. That's where you send your money-making updates. That's where you get people to check out your case studies and get them to pay top dollar for whatever affiliate programs or original products you are pushing on your buyers list. This is called a two-track marketing campaign. It's extremely powerful and it has made a lot of people rich. But you have to step away from the very common mistake of thinking that once you get a lot of people to your mailing list, you have it made. Absolutely wrong. There is another step that you need to take. Reason number seven, your brand gets natural repetition through multi-platform marketing. Assuming that all your social media accounts on all four major platforms look similar to each other, you get many bites at the apple. You really do. When people run into your brand on Facebook, there's a chance they might run into your brand on Twitter. 
If there is enough graphical similarity between your brands, then they can see that you're all over the place and they can converse or engage with your brand regardless of where they are on the internet. Eventually, this builds a tremendous amount of familiarity and people might become so comfortable that they join your mailing list when you call them to action. The best part of this is that it happens naturally by you simply creating accounts on all the major platforms. Your brand speaks to people who are interested in your niche regardless of where they go. Reason number eight, save money through content repurposing. Make no mistake about it, content generation is expensive. Even if you hire highly qualified, talented, skilled, and experienced people from countries with huge numbers of people who speak English as a second language, you can still be out thousands of dollars every year. High quality writers from places like India, Pakistan, and the Philippines may be cheaper than American writers, but their costs still add up over time. One of the things about social media marketing that really excites me is the fact that you can create content and repurpose it into many different formats. This reduces your cost. If I hire a writer from India and pay that person $1,000 a month, I can get a fixed amount of content. At this point, I can choose to pay that person another $1,000 to get even more content, or I can take whatever content he or she produced and turn them into videos, infographics, or strip them down into questions for tweets. I can turn them into diagrams. I can take the voiceover of the video that I produced and turn it into a sound file. I can even make a slideshow of those materials. Once I have all this repurposed content, then I can share them on format-specific platforms. For example, I can share the slideshows on SlideShare. I can post the infographics on Pinterest. I can post the product shots or general product pictures on Instagram. I can post the questions on Twitter. I can also post the videos on YouTube. Best of all, I can post all the formats on Facebook. Do you see how this works? When you do this, you buy content once, repurpose it, and share it so you get a higher chance of getting traffic or visibility with that repurposed content. You're not creating content constantly. In fact, the name of the game is to produce as little content as possible, but market these high-quality pieces widely. This is how you maximize their value. The old idea of constantly publishing content just to get a few eyeballs here and there is dead. Seriously, that's a one-way ticket to the poorhouse. Your better approach would be to make that content work for you by converting it into many different formats. You then share these different formats on platforms that specialize in those formats. I hope the eight reasons above are clear and that you are pumped up to do social media marketing right. In video three, we're going to talk about picking a social media marketing campaign that is most likely to produce results for your type of online business. See you there. You need to modify your social media marketing campaign based on your online business type. I know this video is going to throw a lot of people off, but people need to understand this. One of the major reasons why a lot of otherwise intelligent and experienced social media marketers fail to get the results that they're looking for is the fact that they're using the wrong approach. Their approach to social media marketing and the websites they're promoting is a one-size-fits-all approach. Now, you don't need me to explain to you why that's a bad idea. It doesn't work in most areas of your life, and it definitely doesn't work when it comes to social media marketing. You can't look at this project with the mindset that as long as you pull traffic from social media platforms, then you can use the exact same method and the exact same communication tactics, regardless of the online entity or business you are promoting. Since we're using content to develop relationships on social media platforms, this one-size-fits-all approach is even more fatal. I mean, it's a bad enough idea as it is, but if you were to use a content-based campaign, it gets even worse. The reality is that different business types require different content and publishing strategies. You have to customize, modify, and tweak your particular content and publishing strategies on social media to fit the type of website you are trying to promote. Now, there are a huge number of website variations out there. In fact, there are too many. I would venture to say that the only limit, really, is your imagination. But if you were to categorize these different website types into four rough forms, they would more or less fall into the following. Publishing, e-commerce or dropshipping, email lists, and traffic sales. Again, there are many variations of these, but if you were to look at the different types of businesses out there, you can pretty much reduce them to these four types. When you study these closely, they have different needs. 
They have different features that must be addressed. Otherwise, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. Unfortunately, a lot of social media marketers would try to promote a blog the exact same way they would try to promote a dropshipping or e-commerce website. Similarly, somebody who is essentially just trying to sell their social media traffic is trying to do content marketing like somebody with a blog. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. The bottom line is obvious. Different strategies require different content types. You must start with the type of online entity you are promoting. Are you promoting a blog? Do you have a website that uses a lot of articles? Do people contribute content? Well, you have a publishing website. Do you have a dropshipping online store? Maybe you built it with Shopify and you use Oberlo to get products from AliExpress. When people buy stuff from your storefront, your software orders the materials from AliExpress and you keep the difference. Maybe you sell from your own inventory. It doesn't really matter. You run an e-commerce website. This is very different from a publishing business. Similarly, if you make your money through your mailing list, you can't market on social media the same way as you would if you had an online store. Again, different strategies require different content types. What do you have available? Now that I've gotten you thinking about how special your specific website target is, I need you to look at the different content types available to you. You need to think outside the box. You need to look at all the available options out there and how you can create content that is tailored to your specific type of online entity. Here are the list of content types you can use to promote different online entities, but your specific focus and specialization should weigh more heavily on certain types of content instead of others. Audio clips, slideshows, infographics, diagrams, blog links, videos. The bottom line. Don't just think links. It really freaks me out. In fact, it really saddens me when I see a lot of otherwise capable social media marketers focus almost entirely on spreading their links. I think that this is the end game. Well, yes, links are important. I can see where they're coming from because when people click on a link, that's instant traffic. But you have to understand that depending on the type of target site you are promoting, you would build a tighter brand if you shared different types of content. In many situations, you probably would be better off sharing more audio or infographics and diagrams than if you were sharing naked links because people are bombarded with links every single day. You have to pay your dues. You have to become familiar enough to your target audience members using these different content types for them to eventually trust you enough to click on your link. Unfortunately, a lot of people have this in reverse. They start with the links, and when they get desperate, they then use other types of content. At that point, they're a day late and a buck short. Don't do that. Instead, use the derivative content first and then play up the links. Also, not all of these formats work with your particular style of website. I would suggest that you look at your competitors first and pay close attention to the type of content they are currently sharing. What kind of format do they use? Are they sharing mostly picture quotes? Are they focused primarily on video? Do they have a special fondness for diagrams? This is not random. This is actually telling you all you need to know about how to appeal to your target audience members. This is no time to be revolutionary and come up with something new completely out of left field. That's not going to work. There's a reason why your competitors are not doing this. At this point in the game, you should focus on what everybody else is doing and reverse engineer their formats. Once you have established a distinct brand, then you can experiment with different formats, different ways of doing things, and possibly coming up with something that is distinct to your brand. But until and unless you reach that point, you need to focus first on reverse engineering what everybody else is doing. In other words, let them do your homework. Focus on what they're doing right and build on it. Figure out their areas for improvement and come up with a more compelling offer. Pay attention to what they're not doing. Avoid those because obviously it doesn't pay. I hope I'm being clear here. Make sure that your content types as well as your sharing strategies fit the type of business you're in. A little bit of reverse engineering can definitely go a long way. The classic way to do social media marketing and why it is a waste of your time. Before I jump into the actual meat and potatoes of this training, I need to devote some real estate to how other people are doing social media marketing. I need to do this because it's very tempting for people to engage in the same practices. I can see where they're coming from. It is easy. 
It's like seeing some chump change in front of you, and it's almost irresistible to fight the urge of bending over and picking up that change. But when you do that, it will throw you off. It will give you a false sense of incentive or reward, and don't be surprised if you end up giving in to your worst instincts, only to walk away with less than nothing. This happens all the time because human beings, being the way they are, would always take the path of least resistance. But who can blame them? But by warning you about how this works out, it is my hope that you stay away from this and focus instead on investing your time, effort, and energy on the right way to do things. The Classic Approach to Social Media Marketing So what is the classic approach to social media marketing? Well, it's actually quite simple. Whether we're talking about Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you need to only follow, like, or friend people who are interested in your niche. You connect with all these people, and then after you have followed them, a lot of them would actually follow you back. For example, on Twitter, for every 100 follows, don't be surprised if maybe 20 to 30 people follow you back. Now, this is where it gets really bad. Classic social media marketers would then spam their followers. They would just send all sorts of unrelated garbage, and then they would unfollow. Do you see the pattern? Follow, get followed, spam, unfollow. I wish I could tell you that they do this sporadically, but instead, these self-professed professional marketers use all sorts of sophisticated software to do this. Up until a few years ago, this worked like a charm. This was a great way to get a lot of Twitter traffic, but not anymore. This pattern instead can get you banned. More importantly, whatever traffic you do manage to get using this tactic is not going to be any good. Why? There's no targeting. You're not pre-qualifying these people who would follow you. The only reason why they followed you in the first place is because you followed them first. Where's the selection there? Where's the targeting there? Now, you can make wild guesses, but ultimately, it's a volume game and it leads nowhere. The return on effort is not there. I'm not saying that you can't make any sales doing this technique. I'm not claiming that. But what I'm saying is that whatever rewards you get are not offset by the wasted time, effort, and energy, as well as opportunity costs involved you're better off using a quality-based approach. Audiences are looking for quality. The bottom line to modern social media marketing is to use quality content. Your content will speak for you. Your content will do the pre-sales job regarding your brand. In other words, your content is your representative. It speaks to the values you want your brand to be associated with. The sad reality. Even if the follow, get followed, spam, and unfollow technique still works for some people, the rules have changed. Social media platforms will reward or punish you based on engagement. If you want an extreme example of this, just look at Facebook. Facebook used to be a traffic gold mine. Not anymore. You need a really high level of engagement to preserve your reach on Facebook. If you get normal levels of engagement, good luck. That's how bad things are. And that's why I need to take this time to spell out why this classic social media marketing no longer works. Other Failed Methods I would be remiss in my duty to educate you on failed social media marketing strategies if I don't also mention other failed techniques. First, hashtag hunting no longer works. This technique involves marketers finding hashtags that are trending. They basically would publish niche-specific content, but use unrelated or irrelevant hashtags and pair them with their content. They do this because they want to hitch a ride on the upward trend of those hashtags. They know people are searching for those hashtags. They know that these hashtag trends are hot, so they want to poach as many eyeballs as possible. Unfortunately, the traffic that you get is not going to be any good. People are looking for specific types of information, and when they see that your content is so obviously unrelated, they're not going to click through. You might even get reported. Another failed method you should stay away from is influencer spamming. There are many influencers in most all niches. If you want to see this in action, go to Facebook or Twitter. There are many specialized pages and specialized Twitter accounts. Now, constantly mentioning those influencers on your content is not going to help if your content doesn't really add any value. There has to be a reason why you are engaging with these influencers, and drawing their attention is not enough. Getting them to look at your content because you think your content is hot is a lousy idea. Instead, you should focus your engagement tagging based on what they did. For example, if an influencer was talking about recent trends in athletic shoes, then that person would be fair game for an article I post regarding the latest trends in athletic shoes and what they mean in terms of the bottom line of large footwear apparel companies. That influencer would be directly interested in what I have to say because I'm sharing content that is not only high quality, but is directly related to stuff he or she is already talking about. 
Do you see the specificity here? Do you see the direct link? Now, compare this with an influencer who talks only about Forex, and I tag that influencer when I'm talking about Bitcoin. That person's going to get annoyed. Do you see the difference? Finally, automated publishing with no outreach is not going to work. Basically, what you're doing is throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping something sticks. If you're just publishing content on an automated basis on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and other platforms, it's anybody's guess whether people would actually engage. You have to do some outreach. You have to draw eyeballs to your content. You have to find existing pools of highly qualified audiences and get your social media account in front of their eyeballs. Use your very best content. If you do this right, your automated publishing on social media will be greatly rewarded. Use a shotgun approach and you're probably going to get the same results as other failed social media marketers. 10 Steps to Faster and Easier Modern Social Media Marketing In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the 10 steps I'm going to teach you in this training. This training is a product of many failed experiments. Believe me, if you've been exposed to some type of hot or groundbreaking social media marketing technique or strategy, I've been there. I've done that. This training is a product of all my experiences. I know what works and I know what doesn't. I also understand that people have different skill levels, time horizons, and project resources. I understand the limitations. I understand most people's concerns regarding social media marketing. Accordingly, I've come up with a 10-step program that appeals to most social media marketers, regardless of how small or how big their budget is, and regardless of their skill levels. If you're looking for a truly effective social media marketing game plan that you can set up to pretty much work on autopilot, this is it. Please understand that these steps that I'm going to lay out are exactly that. Steps. You need to follow them. You can't skip a step. You can't assume that since I mentioned certain keywords or I'm talking about certain themes and topics that you have mastered this already. I need you to look at all this information with an open mind and pretend you are learning social media marketing all over again. If you don't have that mindset and you are all too eager to skip steps, don't be surprised if the plan that I'm teaching you will not work for you. How can it? You zip through it. You rushed. You skip through certain key parts. You need to be patient with this program by going through each step. Don't go to the next step until you've mastered the step you're on. I know you're busy. I know you don't have the time. But you need to do this right. Otherwise, you only have yourself to blame if things don't work out. Are we clear? Okay. Here are the 10 steps to faster and easier modern social media marketing. Niche research and targeting. Content curation. Reverse engineer your competition's top content. Create fine-tuned payload content. Market your mailing list right. Unlock the power of repurposed multi-platform content. Automate content sharing. Scale up your targeting. Sell to your list differently. Reinvest your profits the right way. Those are the 10 steps. I know they sound pretty simple. They definitely appear pretty straightforward, but the devil, as always, is in the details. See you in the next video. How to do niche research and targeting the right way. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've run into social media marketers and they automatically want to know about traffic generation. Forget about niche research. Forget about consumer intelligence. Don't worry about setting up the right site to get in front of the right target audience eyeballs. Let's just skip straight to the good stuff. That's the kind of mindset that I run into all the time, and that's why a lot of people struggle in this game. You have to understand that until and unless you find yourself barking up the right tree, you're just going to be chasing your tail. I know I'm using a lot of dog analogies, but these are the most appropriate. Most people are simply just chasing their tails and wasting a whole lot of time doing stuff that doesn't really add to their bottom line. A lot of these, and I would guess all of them, can be quickly dispensed with if people only did niche targeting ahead of time. In other words, know your audience. Since you have a clear profile of who your target audience is, the next step is to go to these different social media platforms and find them there. Believe it or not, whatever it is you are promoting, regardless of how esoteric, obscure, or weird it may be, there are already people on social media platforms talking about or showing interest in whatever you are promoting. I know it sounds crazy and it sounds weird, but it's absolutely true. Your job as a marketer is to find those audiences on these social media platforms. The way to do this, of course, is to identify your business's target audience. Sadly, most marketers don't even bother with this. Instead, they just look at social media marketing as a simple task of finding traffic. That's it. That's the name of the game. That's all there is to it. 
If you want to be successful, you need to be clear about who your target audience is. And believe me, this is not always easy. You're going to run into the temptation of making educated guesses about who your target audience members are. Most of the time, that doesn't work. Thankfully, there is an easier way. The more you take random shots in the dark, making all sorts of wild guesses, the more money and time you will lose. There's a shortcut here. Find your competitors. Seriously, just find them. And let me tell you, regardless of how weird, esoteric, or seemingly unknown your niche is, there will be at least one competitor on social media. Find that organization or business and let them do your niche and target audience research for you. Since they've already started and are already speaking to your audience, find out who your competitors are and look at their social media profiles. Reverse engineer who they're following. Pay attention to who they're targeting. Look at how they categorize themselves. In the most simplest terms, pay attention to the hashtags they use with their content. These clues should be enough to give you an idea of where to start. This way, you get a head start. You're not completely stuck in the dark and absolutely clueless as to what to do. Instead, you have some objective, tried and proven information you can work with. Pick your target niche. You have to remember that every business can be positioned in at least one of two ways. The bigger your niche, the more angles you would have at your disposal. You can look at different subsegments of your niche. You need to understand how this works because you might think you have a clear niche, but it may well turn out that there are many different layers or tiers to that niche. There might be different subsegments there. You should have a clear understanding of what your niche is generally and what subsegments exist within that larger niche. Again, you can reverse engineer your competitors to take a stab at this. Regardless, you need to do this. You need to get this information. Now that you have an idea of what your target niche is, go to the different platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Now, look at whether these places have sizable content areas or messaging areas like Facebook pages, groups, Google Plus communities, Twitter hashtags, Pinterest pin boards, and existing YouTube channels. Pay attention to these places and see if your niche is big enough on those different platforms. If you notice that a particular platform doesn't really feature that much content for your specific niche, this is a red flag. The demand may not be there. The audience size might not be worth your while. On the other hand, if you see there's a lot of videos regarding the topics that you're going to be hitting, this may be a good sign. But you need to do another level of analysis. Pay attention to the number of competitors you have. If there seems to be a huge number of competitors fighting over the same niche, then this is going to be a problem. But if it turns out that there's a lot of content targeting your niche, but they're only produced by a handful of people or organizations, this is an encouraging sign. Also, pay attention to how active your target audience members are. Look at the content that's being shared regarding your niche. Do you see a lot of engagement? Do people share this stuff? Is this hashtag quite prevalent? Look for these and other objective indicators of activity. When you wrap your mind around these indicators, then you should have a clear idea of whether you should target your niche at a particular platform or whether you should ignore a platform altogether. List out your niche indicators. While you're doing reverse engineering, pay attention to how your niche is indicated on platforms. These involve hashtags, categories, keyword targets, labeling patterns, and tags. Use these to do the analysis I described above. Again, in any niche, there are sub-niches. So your goal here is to find a sub-niche or a way of positioning your content so you don't run into a ridiculous amount of competition. You're still tapping into a sizable pool of demand but you're not making things impossible for yourself by running headlong into well-entrenched professional competition. You will probably need to keep experimenting with different sub-niches until you find one that is promising enough. Content Curation, your secret social media marketing weapon. Now that you have picked the specific sub-niche that you're going to be targeting, as well as finished doing advanced research on where your sub-niche or niche segment audiences are located on social media platforms, the next step is to find content. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that you stand to save a lot of money. The bad news is that you need to put in a lot more time and pay attention to details. There are no two ways about it. You cannot drop the ball when it comes to the quality of the content that you are going to be sharing on your social media accounts. Each and every piece of content you share must build your brand. This is non-negotiable. You can't just pick random pieces of content that somehow, some way has something to do with your niche. That's not going to help you get the right eyeballs. That's not going to help you establish the kind of credibility and authority you need to eventually convert highly specific and qualified traffic from social media into cold, hard cash. What is content curation? 
As I mentioned above, you stand to save a lot of money with content curation. This should be obvious. After all, you're not going to be using the content that you yourself created. Content curation is all about picking other people's content and sharing those materials on your social media accounts. This creates a win-win situation. Since you're sharing links and descriptions of such content, the creator of that content gets free traffic. You, on the other hand, get to build up your credibility because people are rewarded for following your accounts with highly targeted, highly specific, value-added content. Everybody wins. The user wins, you win, and of course, the original content creator comes out ahead. This is how it's supposed to work. You win big time because you save a tremendous amount of money not having to create a huge amount of original content. If you've ever tried to write your own stuff or outsource content creation, whether in the U.S. or to other parts of the world, it can get quite expensive very quickly. Content curation enables you to build credibility with your audience in a very inexpensive way. You use other people's content. You get to entertain them, build credibility, and gain their trust. The downside here is the time. Sure, you're not spending greenbacks, but you're definitely going to be spending time. As I mentioned above, you cannot be indiscriminate when you are trying to do content curation. Whatever goodwill you have built up for your brand will go up in smoke if people catch on to the fact that you are just randomly curating and spreading low-quality content that may have something to do with your niche. That's not going to cut it, not by a long shot. Adopt the right content curation strategy. Now that you know where your target audience members are on social media platforms, you build credibility by populating your social media accounts with highly credible, high-authority third-party content. This is called curation. In between those materials, you're going to be sharing your own original content. From time to time, you're going to call people to action to take a look at the incentives you're giving away for them to join your mailing list. This is how you play the game. When people follow you, they are rewarded with top-notch content. It doesn't really matter whether you produced that material or it was written by somebody else. Your followers get rewarded for following your account. They get niche-specific material. Eventually, you build trust with them because you only send them the very best materials. They start paying attention to your own materials. More importantly, they start noticing the content you share, which actively encourages them to sign up to your mailing list. This is the key. You intersperse your own original content. You create an impression of quality in their minds because you're sending only the very best third-party content. You then mix in your own original content, which is of the same quality as the other stuff you're sending. Eventually, they warm up to your brand, and this is where your call-to-action content comes in. You call them to action regarding the freebies you're giving away. Maybe you're giving away software, a booklet, discount codes, or even a full-blown book. It doesn't matter. You are ethically bribing them to enter their email addresses so they can download the incentive. That's how you build up your mailing list. On top of all this, when people join your mailing list, you call them to action to share the emails that you're sending them. Maybe you should ask them to forward that email to their friends. Maybe you would want them to copy and paste the material and post it on their Facebook wall. The best part. The best part to content curation is that it's very easy to automate. Seriously. This is one way of content promotion that is very automation friendly. You only need to get the URLs of the third party content that you're curating and plug them into an Excel sheet. You then convert the file into a CSV file, which is then imported by social media scheduling tools like Hootsuite and Social Oomph. You don't have to manually enter anything. You don't have to schedule everything by hand. You can do all of this through software. Isn't that awesome? You get to build credibility while at the same time minimizing work. Now, with that said, you need to pay special attention to the content quality. High attention to detail is the key. You have to resist the temptation of running basic keyword searches on Google or on social media platforms and grabbing anything that is somewhat related to your niche. That is a one-way ticket to brand destruction. You worked hard to build your social media brand. It really would be a shame to see it all go up in smoke because the content you're curating is very unpredictable when it comes to quality. There may be several days when you're sending the very best, cutting-edge reports on your niche, followed by a few days of just completely worthless content. What do you think prospective fans would think? Either they would think that your brand is unreliable or you're unprofessional. Whatever the case may be, you're not going to be convincing people that your brand focuses on the very best in your niche. You need to be very discriminating when you select your content. You have to read through the materials. Make sure that the content is alive, updated, and well-written. This, of course, takes time. The trade-off, obviously, is that you don't have to spend money. Regardless, you need to pay close attention to the content that you're sharing because it represents your brand. 
The quality it contains either makes your brand look good or erodes your brand. It's your choice.